good morning and thank you for being with us today. We begin our service with an opening hymn, number 53, Once He Came in Blessing. <laughs> give us this season of Advent to help us learn how to watch for Jesus. Open our eyes and help us to be alert so we will be able to recognize the Lord when he comes again. with you and also with you let us pray merciful God who sent your messengers the prophets to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation give us grace to heed your warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ our Redeemer who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reader for today is Carol Remy. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in, 
In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the, God, see the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed the flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm selected for today is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 to 13. We will pray the psalm together. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the inequity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that the Lord one day, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is number 
75, there's a voice in the wilderness crying. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the next two Sundays, the compelling figure of John the Baptist takes center stage. Unlike Matthew and Luke, the Gospel of Mark begins not with Jesus' birth, but with John the Baptist, carrying a message of preparation, expectation, and repentance. John serves as a key figure in understanding the season of Advent. Yet from his story, we learn that John clearly understands that his primary call is to prepare the way for the one to come who was far greater than he. According to Luke's Gospel, John is of priestly descent, the son of Elizabeth and Zechariah, and related to Jesus. In the synoptic accounts, John has already been arrested and imprisoned before Jesus begins his public ministry. After Jesus is baptized, the two cousins have no further contact. Jesus' influence causes Herod the Great to have John beheaded. In fact, Herod is terrified when Jesus appears, afraid that he might actually be the resurrected John the Baptist. 
So why does Jesus attach such importance to John the Baptist? Three characteristics stand out for me. First, John's faith presence, a radical openness to the Spirit of God. John demonstrates a wholehearted obedience to God. He exemplifies a complete willingness to be directed by God and to remain untamed by the world. John's faith is an uncompromising faith. It ruffles, it upsets, and without a question, it draws strange looks and side glances from those around him. Undeniably, John has a few rough edges. He doesn't just tell the truth. He hurls the truth with veins popping and eyes bulging and hair flying in every direction. He delivers the truth just as he receives the truth from God, unrehearsed, unedited, and unwritten. Hearing his incendiary faith, people experience the rebirth of prophecy that we hear in the Old Testament and the heralding of the Messiah. They experience a faith presence at work in John where the message and the actions are both congruent. This is a prophet who not only shares the message, but lives the message. This is not just a person arguing for repentance, but someone who lives repentance. And this is the kind of authenticity that we disciples must emulate this Christmas. An authenticity that we must read mark, learn, and inwardly digest, because without it, Christmas will be lost in a myriad of lists and planning frenzies and calendar dates and endless shopping. The second characteristic in John is the transparency of his faith. He wants the divine to be seen through him, not as him. All four Gospels emphasize that John reflects any power of a, or allegiance he could easily have had, preferring rather to shine the spotlight on Jesus. John is a forerunner, a herald, not an ego seeker. He serves as a thunderbolt for a world that is half asleep in denial. Simultaneously, he serves as a window into God's ultimate saving reality. Jesus Christ. What better criterion for effective ministry in this Advent season when so many need so much than for us to pray for the gift of transparency, to be in all acts of ministry, in all acts of our life, transparently open to Christ, to be present to others in a way that Jesus Christ might be beheld and upheld. To point to Christ as the ultimate source of our acts of love. Imagine, just imagine what that could mean for us. Imagine what it could mean for the church today. The third characteristic is that John's faith maintains the sacred bond between spirituality and ethics. In his book, Wisdom of the Desert, Thomas Merton writes of the belief that many of the early Christian monastics held about the world. He says, Society was regarded by the Desert Fathers as a shipwreck from which each individual had to swim for his life. These were people who believed that to let oneself drift along, passively accepting the tenets and values of what they knew as society, was simply a disaster. This was known as the eighth deadly sin, acedia, meaning a lack of care or a dejection that makes spirituality almost impossible. Merton says the self, shaped by the culture, has to be named for what it is, the false self, a self that feeds the prevailing social compulsions of the day. John was a prophet of the true self, if ever there was one. Every dimension of his life works against submission to social compulsions. 
His clear-eyed desert faith detaches him from one of the social compulsions evident in his day, and one that has prevailed ever since. And that is, so common at this time of year, the insistence on more, more, I want more. And it is in his detachment from things that lays John's ethical power. Because he gave up consumerism, he could do the work that God had given him to do. Last week we talked about birth, birth pains and the fact that something is gained when we grow closer to God. But at the same time, we have to give something up in order to make it happen. And only you can decide what you can let go of. Today, John the Baptist prepares the way for the arrival of Jesus. Just as the season of Advent prepares the way for the arrival of Jesus at Christmas, John proclaims the need for repentance, for turning back toward God. Let's use this Advent season to do the same. Repent and return to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with an affirmation of our faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people for today are found printed in the online leaflet. The prayers of the people. God of wisdom, Give to your people knowledge of your truth and an awareness of your presence. Inspire clergy, worship leaders, and musicians to an ever-deepening sense of praise. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. God of creation, hold the cosmos and all creation in your care. Grant to the earth both light and darkness, warmth and cold, life and death. Inspire and compel us to care for the earth as your precious gift. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. King of all nations, bring peace and justice to the nations of the world. Guide the leaders of all nations in the way of justice and truth. Rise up the poor, needy and suffering, victims of war and violence, and those who are persecuted. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. God of David, look from your throne upon all who are in need. Bind the broken, 
and those who are brokenhearted. Free those who are imprisoned by anxiety, depression, addiction, pain, and other disease. We remember especially Richard Buecher, Jonathan Dash, Jim Finnegan, Dottie Holweger, Peter Jankov, Ann Kirk, Dick Kirk, Shirley Lester, Ellie Lewis, George Lewis, Tori Robinson, Sarah Schwartz, Sue Scott, Jared Shea, Peggy Smith, Wilson and Joan Summers, Mary Jo Tucker, and Sally Wolf. Bring to them healing and wholeness of life. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. God of Jesse, nurture our community. Give us joy in one another and make us servants of all those in need. Be with all who travel this holiday season and bless your, our holy day celebrations with your spirit. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. O oh God, day spring from on high, we remember all who have died and now live in your light, remembering, remembering especially Patty Perry, who died this week. Gather us to yourself and teach us to sing your praises in this life and the life to come. Please offer your own prayers and petitions silently or aloud. Please join me in the concluding collect. God of love, as we enter this season of expectant waiting, direct us to see beyond human distractions and help us prepare our hearts for Emmanuel, God with us. We ask this through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, who together with you are one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Our offertory hymn for today is Comfort, Comfort Ye My People.
We continue with our liturgy, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, that by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith, with thanksgiving. Our communion hymn is number 63, O Heavenly Word, Eternal Light. Thanksgiving for our many blessings. We will pray the post communion prayer as printed in the leaflet. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this spiritual communion today. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. I want to thank Joe Loudon for being our guest organist today. I want to thank Charlotte Paulson for being our soloist, and Carol Remy for being our reader, and as always, Jay Hummel for being our technical specialist. Our closing hymn is number 72, Hark the Glad Sound, the Savior Comes. Yeah. 
Oh, this is crazy.